All right, if you're using Google Sheets, like we are right here, you may want to conditionally add values. So we're going to add these values together if a couple of conditions are met. So in this case, we're going to use the sum ifs formula. So I'll type it out here just so you can see it. Remember the S on the end, and that's going to allow you to sum a range depending on multiple criteria. So with this data, what we're going to want to do is sum the number of units that are greater than 11, so really 12 or more, and are coming from the North warehouse. So you could do this by using an if statement and then stringing conditions together with the and function, but the sum ifs is a little bit easier. So I'll hit a parentheses, and now's probably a good time to mention that if you want to follow along, if you go to, let me back out a little bit here. Go to sheetshelp.com and the sum ifs page will have a copy of this template. You can copy it into your own Google Drive and it will have all these data sets and formulas. And what we're trying to do at Sheets Help is between the website, the templates, and these videos, you should be able to learn everything you need to know about Google Sheets. So if you have that template or if you just want to follow along anyway, we're going to zoom back in and we'll start this formula. So we'll hit an equal sign and we will say sum ifs opening parentheses and let's hit the question mark here to give us a little bit of help. The first thing that this formula wants is the sum range. So it says, what am I going to end up adding? So I will grab B5 through B9. And then the second thing is, hey, where's the first piece of data that I'm going to use to make a decision on whether or not to sum these? So it's not necessarily the same range. In this case, we can use the same range because for our first condition, we're going to say greater than 11. You have to look at the numbers to decide that. So I've selected the range. And here, uh, a tendency would probably be to say greater than 11 and just type it out. But that's not how this specific function works. So we're going to delete that. It wants the next argument after a comma. All right, and then it gets a little bit more unusual where you need to surround this in quotes, so we'll use the operator of greater than, but inside a quote, number 11, even though it's a number, it looks a little bit funny putting it in quotes if you're used to functions, uh, but that's how sum ifs works. And we're done with this first criteria. So we're just looking for that it's greater than 11. But of course, the power of this function is that you can specify more than one criteria. You can specify as many as you want, but we're going to just do two. But the range for this second criteria is not the numbers, it's the text just to the right of it. So that's in C5 through C9. And then the criteria for this is just that it's equal to north. So you don't need an equal sign, you just uh, type out the word. So it's just north. And in parentheses hit enter, and we're done. And what it's done is it's picked up a 13 because that's greater than 11 and it's north skipped all of these and it's picked up the 28. So if I highlight the 13 and the 28, in the lower right-hand corner, it's telling me it's 41. And that's what the function's returning as well. All right, so let's go to the second one. We'll delete the result for now. What we're looking to do here is we want to uh, sum these values based on if they're after a certain date and they contain a word. All right, so this one, uh, you would think would be easy after the last example, a real similar thing, but we threw a twist in here. Let's get the sum range first. We know how to do that at this point. Let's do the easy criteria range, get that out of the way. So we'll say B15 through B19. And remember, there's no equal sign here. You just type peach. And now for the bit trickier part. So we're working with dates here. And whenever you work with dates in a spreadsheet, you often at times just have to do things a little bit differently. Underneath their numbers, but their formatting makes them look like dates. So most of the time you can just treat them like a number, but in this case, we can't do it like we did the number before. What you have to do is you need to put your operator in quotes, and then you need to join it to the date value with an ampersand, All right? In this case, we're going to do less than, and we want February 5th, but you have to close the less than out, do an ampersand, and then do February 5th, 2022. 
you would never get that right on the first time. I can pretty much guarantee that you're only going to be able to do that after searching for it. Uh, but there it is. In this 2522, this could also be a cell reference to a cell with that data in it. In that case, you wouldn't need the quotes. But since we're typing it in, you do. And then that should be all that function needs. So we'll close that off and we'll hit enter. 36. So let's double check that when all the values with peach, but it needs to be before February 5th. So that leaves these two. If I highlight the values, it's 36. All right, so we have one last example to go through. And this example is going to show how to use wildcards. So if you've been around computers for a while, you remember that the asterisk wildcard means anything. You can also use a question mark here, which means any one character you would use two of them to match two characters and so on. But most often you're going to use the asterisk and it means any combination of characters. So what this is doing is it, we're going to pick up the values of peach anytime that they come from lot D. Okay, so there's a D here, but there's also a B. So it's not that straightforward. And there's a D here. So we want to end up picking uh, this value to sum, skipping this peach because it's not from D, and then picking up this value. All right, we won't type this one out. We're just going to double click in it and show you that the secret, which we already talked about a little bit, was an asterisk before the D. So if you also have letters occurring after the D, you can add an asterisk on the other side. It's going to operate the same. And it's going to give you the value of the 13 added to the 28. All right, so if you only have one condition that you're checking, it'd be a lot simpler if you want to use the sumif function and we'll cover that in this next video if you click in the upper right hand corner. Thanks for watching. It's nice to have you along.